joining my talk today. Uh, my name is Lucas Goldner and I'm going to talk about Flutter element embedding today. So first let me introduce myself. As I said, I'm called Lucas Goldner. That's my Twitter handle. I'm currently working as a Flutter engineer at a com Japanese company called Utrust. I'm German-Brazilian, 23 years old, and um, I talk those languages, so if you want to talk in any of those, let's have a chat later. But enough uh, about me. Let's have a look at Flutter element embedding. So how many of you have heard about element embedding? Please raise a hand. Okay, not so many as I've expected, because unfortunately this feature came out during a time where like um, the introduction of Impeller was a big topic and FFI gen came and as well as start patterns and uh, records and uh, pattern matching. So that's why I think this feature got a bit left in the background, even though it's such a great feature. So that is why I'm going to present it today. So element embedding, what does it do? So basically element embedding allows you to take any website, like any Flutter app that supports web build and put it into uh, your website directly. So no iframes or something like that. And um, some potential use cases for that are, for example, taking a vertical slice of your app and putting it on your landing page. So users can try it out the app directly on the home page. Another use case could be like a documentation page where you embed multiple Flutter screens and then depending on the values on the website, you can re-render the layout directly and see the results. So I think that's also a nice feature there. And the best thing about this, it also allows you to take uh, the app state and the website state and share it with each other so they can modify it from one side uh, and through each other. So this opens up a lot of potential. And uh, the feature came out with 3.7 like one year ago, so hopefully most of you have migrated so you can use this awesome feature. So now we will have a look at some demos. Uh, Rauf. Hey, Lucas. How's it going? So uh, I've released a new app. Can you check out the home page real quick, please? Uh, I'm, I'm in a presentation. Come on, please. Uh, okay, I guess. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, Okay, uh, so Rauf just called and uh, sent me this web page. So have, let's have a look. Red counter. So this looks very interesting. I haven't seen a pay, uh, app like that before. And it has so many nice features. <laughs> mm. But I think we can take this a step further. So as I've said, we can take any app that supports web build and put it into the website. So let's do that. So the first thing that we're going to do is build our web version of the website. Then we will receive an output you probably can see, but uh, the important files here are the Flutter.js and the main.js as well as the assets, of course. So the first thing we, we're going to do in our website is embed the Flutter.js in a script text because that Flutter.js uh, handles the logic to load our actual app then. So when the first script is loaded, you can now use the second script and use the load event of the website to trigger, for example, loading the Flutter app. And then we need to pass in the path to the main main.js because that includes our app logic. And then we can select our under the host element as the element we want to embed the app into. So when that is done, it's not so much. We then ta create a diff, for example, with the same ID, of course, otherwise you won't see anything. And yeah, this is it. So let's have a look again. Yeah, pretty nice, right? You can see how it uh, updates the counter. So that's the actual web, uh, app now embedded in our website. But we can take it even a step further. So as I said, we can modify the app state using the website and in reverse. So we're going to do that. and. In order to do that, we need the uh, Dart site to uh, interact with the JavaScript code. So for that, we're going to use JS interop. The first thing we're going to do here is add the dependency uh, JS. And the next thing de really depends on your app. It could be pretty quick. It could be also pretty uh, slow, depending on your complexity and on your use case. In this case, we just have a simple counter app. So let's go to the important part. Um, we are in this case, we just have our uh, home state uh, app 
that we want to export to the uh, website. So in order to do that, we use the JS export uh, decorators and export firstly our widget, as well as all of the functions that we want to get, as uh, well as um, in this case our account, so we can then access it on the front end. When that is done, we also in our init state have the option to um, set properties using the set property that comes from the JS library. Um, in this case, we, uh, uh, use we bind it to an identifier, uh, in this case, underscore app state, and export the current widget into there, the state of the widget. And there's also a call method uh, function that allows you to call a uh, method on the front end, uh, of course, using the same identifier. And there's an empty array uh, behind of that where you can pass like values inside and then read it from the front end. So this uh, allows you to modify the uh, website behavior depending on the arguments, for example. And yeah, when this is something you can do. And one more thing that I want to explain before we go back to the front end is why are we using a stream controller for um, a simple counter app? The reason for that is we need to tell basically the from the Flutter app to the website uh, how to update it. So we have the stream controller in the Flutter app, and every time an event, in this case our increment function triggers, uh, it sends an event to the website. And we have also this add handler function, which takes in a function, and this will be given from the front end. So every time we receive an event there, this function will be called but it will make more sense when we see the front end now. So uh, the first thing is the st uh, underscore state set, the, which was the function that we declared. In this case, it's just logging something, but as I said, you can pass in some values then, read, it, uh, read them out in the front end then. Um, inside of this, uh, you have to be careful though with the values because um, it's not type safe. So depending on what you're doing, it could break maybe, so be careful with that. After that, uh, I'm getting my app state now from the window object of the browser with the identifier that I declared. So now we have the app state. I also added a value field on the website, which I'm getting here, and created an update state function, which sets the value of the value field um, with the count of the app. So they're synchronous. And also this ha add handler function that I explained before, we are passing this update function into there. So every time the stream controller gets an event, it triggers the update function again. And in the end, we have the increment button, which um, just is binded to the increment function. Then we set our IDs, and when all of that is done, hopefully correctly, we get this. So now when I press the button inside of our app, we see the value field updates, which is awesome. Um, then we also have the button on the website, which when we press that, actually doesn't update the, this value field here directly. It updates firstly the app, and the app has the stream controller, so it updates again the value field, so we have got a nice cycle over there. And yeah, this was basically it, what you can do with Flutter element embedding. Um, regarding other frameworks, because most of us do don't use only plain HTML websites like I just described. For Angular, there's a really nice uh, documentation that you can check out, an example in some repo, you will find it. Um, but React is a different thing. I don't know why. I tried all of the steps and somehow it didn't work. So, uh, But there was a nice guide some user on GitHub created uh, where you have to edit like the output of your Flutter app so it matches for React. I guess it depends on, uh, it is because uh, React handles like uh, what files you can access in this public folder and you have to set the correct paths then. And so you need to do some uh, adjustments, but uh, this talk would be too long if I go through all of them. So I've created a Medium article you can check out in the repository and I've gone through all of the steps there and also created a script myself that you can just copy paste for yourself and run this so you don't have to go through all of these steps. Um, so feel free to do that. And uh, earlier someone asked me, hey, I, want to, uh, I don't want to build my website with uh, like uh, Flutter, um, but using Jasper, um, it's a 
library that allows you to create websites with Dart in a Flutter-like way. So you can use that. Uh, I hope you heard it, so you can try that out. It's a really nice library. And it also supports Flutter, uh, like element embedding. So this is also pretty nice. And this was basically it. But actually, one more thing. So those slides were made with Flutter, right? If we have a look, it's now running inside of a website. So this entire Flutter Slides app was embedded into a website as purpose of a demo. So you see how flawlessly it works. And the best part about this, it's not a simple website. It's actually a React website. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you see it works. You just need some adjustments. and. Uh, yeah, thanks for listening, and this was it. Yeah, you just clapped. <laughs> thanks a lot. Please come with me. <laughs> oh, can't sit here. All right. S uh, since uh, Alois had live uh, demo, uh, Lucas called it a live thing. While Alois was talking to have a, a live demo as well. So, um, no, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, um so do you uh, so just in uh, building the questions uh do you have um any uh do you know of any website already doing or using this in production uh okay i mean so no, not I not solution uh, in particular but uh this this kind of an embedding and uh, and back and forth from javascript and uh, flutter um, I haven't encountered a website like this. If you have any example, please let me know. I want to look at them as well. Um, I used it in my own, uh, I, I had a timer. Uh, I used it in my own website, like for documentation purposes. Um, I embedded the actual uh, app inside of the website so you can test it out directly, as I said, and see. Um, but I don't know. I can't think of any website right now. Um. Another question that we have is, uh, do you have in mind any use case where you wouldn't recommend it? Uh, maybe uh, because of performance or security issues? Yeah, so it takes not, uh, okay, it depends on your app, of course, how big it is. Um, then you it could like take a little bit of time to load it. So if that's a requirement that you have, then you probably shouldn't use it. Um, depends, of course, on your requirements. Um, for example, with the React app, um, since I needed to uh, update the output of the Flutter app, I couldn't use the minimization of Flutter when it builds the web app. So that's a case where it would be even slower and the client has to download a larger bundle then. It depends. Would you recommend a React Native app with a web view that contains a React that contains Flutter? I mean, I had... So I had <laughs> this, uh, I built the website in React and I had uh, and it embedded my Flutter app and inside of the Flutter app there was this red counter page demo which was a completely separate site and inside of that I also embedded a Flutter app so <laughs> you can go crazy here. <laughs> awesome. Flutterception. <laughs> you told about the, um, the communication between uh, JavaScript and, and Dart. Do you know about some packages like Pygeon that we could have for meta channels uh, to help us uh, serialize the data and have a better communication or I haven't tried it out with Pigeon. I don't does it I have no idea if it supports that. It would be great though. Um, but for now I haven't seen anything like in this aspect. Would be nice though for type safety of course. Mm. Well, uh, what about the size of the of the final uh, app? I mean, wh what's the final uh, bundle that you uh, download from uh, from the web? Uh, can we look at that in the browser? I, guess? <laughs> uh, I don't know the exact size. We can check later. Whoever asked that. All right. Awesome. So I think it's uh, all for uh, for these questions. Thank you very much. <laughs>